What's good? It's Wug. I want to take a moment to talk about one of the greatest guitarists that you may have never heard of, and that is Eddie Hazel. And I've been wanting to talk about this guy for a moment now. He is kind of seen to be, you know, one of the most respected guitarists in, we'll say, rock and roll history. But he's also, you know, ranked a bit lower than some of the, you know, the bigger names that you would imagine. Like you usually see who on the top of the all-time guitarist list. Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, and so forth. Now, Eddie Hazel from the band Funkadelic. Now, everybody looks at Parliament and Funkadelic or Parliament Funkadelic as kind of being a primarily funk outfit. But if you look at the origins of Parliament Funkadelic, before there was Parliament, there was the Parliaments that was co-founded by George Clinton. They're all basically from Plainfield, New Jersey. But then they linked up with Eddie Hazel. Eddie Hazel was like 17 at the time, so his mama wouldn't let him join the band until George Clinton convinced Eddie Hazel's mom to let him join and that, you know, he would be looked after. Well, Eddie Hazel came to the Parliaments as a backing band member. So it was Eddie Hazel, Billy Bass Nelson, who was playing the bass, and then Tiki Fullwood on drums. They were playing as the kind of doo-wop, R&B-ish outfit called the Parliaments. But then the Parliaments ran into legal issues with the name, so they had to think of a new band name. That's where they came up with Funkadelic. So Funkadelic was once the Parliaments backing band, but then Funkadelic took on a life of its own and became its own band. It's got its own full discography throughout the 70s. So it wasn't a Parliament Funkadelic thing until a separate offshoot called Parliament kicked off and it really got going in the mid 70s. So you basically had parallel careers between Parliament and Funkadelic. Basically, they were both releasing albums at around the same time, but Eddie Hazel was mostly a part of Funkadelic. So in the early part of Funkadelic, they had a self-titled debut called Funkadelic in 1970. Then they had an album, Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. This was later, 1970. But it was 1971 and the album Maggot Brain, that is where this graphic comes from, Maggot Brain, 1971, is more of a, they were like a psychedelic rock outfit as much as they were funk. Their funk leanings didn't really become a thing until closer to the mid-70s. We'll say the Cosmic Slop album of 1973 was, was when a lot of the sounds that would be more associated with funk started to take hold to where, you know, in the mid and then late 70s, that's where you start hearing some of the funk classics like Flashlight or Not Just Knee Deep. Go listen to that one. That's one of the more familiar funk classics from Funkadelic. Or One Nation Under a Groove. Those all came late 70s. But in the beginning of the 70s, when Eddie Hazel was still a part of the band, he basically had a guitar solo on that third Funkadelic album titled Maggot Brain, and it was the title track. So the song is called Maggot Brain, and it's basically a 10-plus minute guitar solo. And it was, you know, pretty much a uh, rock folklore that before recording the song, George Clinton, you know, the mastermind and the creative genius that basically recruited all the different instrumentalists and musicians to form both Parliament and Funkadelic, he walked up to Eddie Hazel in the studio and said, I want you to play this like your mama just died. And then Eddie Hazel broke out that Maggot Brain guitar solo. One of the greatest guitar solos of any era. In fact, it's usually looked at as being one of the greatest musicianship solos with any instrument. That is how good the guitar solo for Maggot Brain is. Go listen to that if you haven't. But that is kind of, you know, Eddie Hazel's crowning achievement. That is the piece that has kind of stood the test of time and that you will find on most of the lists of, you know, the all-time great guitar solos, Maggot Brain. But it wasn't just Maggot Brain that really encapsulates how good Eddie Hazel is. Although, you know, that Maggot Brain solo, you could put it up there with any, you know, Almond solo, Dave Gilmore solo, uh, Jimmy Page solo, uh, Buckethead has some great emotional, melancholy sounding solos as well. I love Buckethead's guitar solos. But yeah, Eddie Hazel's Maggot Brain stands up with any of them. 
But on that same Maggot Brain album, like you've got a song called Can You Get With That? And if you know of the newish kind of indie band, you know, a band over the last 10 years, Sleigh Bells, on that debut album by Sleigh Bells called Treats, there's a song called Real Real. Listen to that song and listen to the Funkadelic song from the Maggot Brain album called Can You Get With That? That song, Real Real, basically just snatches that instrumental from Can You Get With That? So on that same Maggot Brain album with the Maggot Brain guitar solo and Can You Get With That, there's also a song called Super Stupid. That one is more of a hard rocker because the Maggot Brain solo is more melancholy, it's more somber, and it's just like anguish and sounds like it's just full of emotion. One of those guitar solos. Think of like Dave Gilmore gets into his most emotional uh, guitar note bending Pink Floyd solos, right? That is what Maggot Brain could do. But on that same album, there's a song called Super Stupid. Again, this one is more of a hard rocker and Eddie Hazel's guitar is on fire on that one. So they're super stupid. And again, this is when Funkadelic is still as much psych rock as they are Funk. And then shortly after the release of that album, that early Funkadelic album called Maggot Brain, Eddie Hazel basically left the band along with um, along with Billy Bass Nelson, I believe. And then he started working with The Temptations like in the mid-70s. But he did pop up here and there to feature on some of both Parliament and Funkadelic's work. Although on that very good Funkadelic album from 1973, Cosmic Slop, Eddie Hazel's barely on that one. But he is on on Standing on the Verge of Getting It On. That is a very good Funkadelic album from the middle of 1974. It's got this one song called I'll Stay. Now, rap fans, especially 90s rap fans, you might remember the Chicago group called Crucial Conflict and more specifically, their big breakout single called Hey in the Middle of the Barn. Listen to that instrumental and then listen to I'll Stay from Standing on the Verge of Getting It On, that 1974 Funkadelic album. Great, great, great instrumental. Both I'll Stay and obviously the instrumental from Crucial Conflict's song Hey because they basically just took that instrumental almost verbatim and just repurposed it to make a rap song in 1996. But I'll Stay from Standing on the Verge of Getting It On, very good guitar solo. And then on that same Standing on the Verge of Getting It On album, there's a song called Good Thoughts, Bad Thoughts. That was pretty much like a revisiting of the melancholy, somber sounding guitar solo. More of a hearkening back to Maggot Brain where it just highlights Eddie Hazel's guitar genius. So I would say next to Maggot Brain, Good Thoughts, Bad Thoughts might be the next best Eddie Hazel guitar solo. Check that one out. Because that one, along with Maggot Brain, those, again, are more in the vein of, you know, some of the, even some of the 80s guitars were really good when they would switch it up and get into a more emotional sounding guitar solo, like uh, Gary Moore. That was the guitars from uh, Thin Lizzy, or even um, kind of like the heavy metalist, Ingwe Malmsteen. Like he would get into some of those somber sounding guitar solos as well, as would even Steve Vai and Joe Satriani. I mean, they have much more surf rock, busier guitar solos, but sometimes they could slow it up and invoke a lot of emotion with their guitar solos as well. So I would say that Maggot Brain and Good thoughts, bad thoughts are more in the vein of those types of guitar solos. Brilliant stuff. But yeah, Eddie Hazel, after that point, I would say 1973, because he left the band again in 1971, came back to participate heavily. I mean, he's got like writing credits on just about all of the songs on Standing on the Verge of Getting It On from 1974. He barely featured in Cosmic Slop just before that. And then featured on like the earliest of the Parliament albums, most notably Up for the Downstroke. That's a very good uh, early Parliament album, also from 1974. So in 1974, you could tell that his participation with George Clinton founded bands was pretty much at the highest it had been since he had left the band in 1971. So he participates in 74's Up for the Downstroke and participates heavily in Standing on the Verge of Getting It On, 1974. But after that, he barely participated in any of the Parliament or Funkadelic work. So he's not on, you know, the most commercially successful Funkadelic album 
One Nation Under a Groove, 1978. He's not even on that one, nor is he on like 1975's Parliament album, The Mothership Connection, another big moment for Parliament. So yeah, his participation from like the mid 70s onward, almost non-existent. But in that pocket from, we'll say 1970, you know, the origins of, of Funkadelic, all the way to 1974, Eddie Hazel's work is great. And the reason you don't see him like near, like closer to the top of those all time greatest guitarist lists is just because his volume, his discography isn't as extensive as say like, you know, Jimmy Page with Led Zeppelin or David Gilmore with Pink Floyd or Brian May from Queen or Eric Clapton. It's got a huge discography if you count like his Cream work, his, uh, what was that band in between? Blind Faith. Um, and then obviously all of his solo stuff, huge discography, right? And then you've obviously got like the Chuck Berries and Jeff Beck, for instance. But, you know, you do find other guitarists with small discographies at or near the top of some of these lists. Like Jimi Hendrix, he doesn't have an extensive career. It was really just a couple of years. Uh, same thing with Dwayne Allman from the Allman Brothers. You usually find him higher than Eddie Hazel as well. But much of that is the reason why I am saying... Eddie Hazel is largely one of the forgotten guitar gods, if you will. It's because, you know, guitar solo for guitar solo and, you know, song for song and album for album, the albums that Eddie Hazel is on and the songs that he participates on, they are just top notch and the guitar work is brilliant. But yeah, let me know um, what you have heard of Eddie Hazel, if you had even heard heard about him and if you have any favorite guitar solos from Eddie Hazel what would those be and Eddie Hazel by the way does have a very good solo album from 1977 called Game Dames and Guitar Things again 1977 he has a very good cover of California Dreaming on that album go give that a listen as well but yeah Eddie Hazel I definitely love his work and you know he passed away you know pretty young he, he died in I want to say 1992 from uh, liver failure internal bleeding so he was only 42 years old when he passed away but yeah Great work while he was with us, and he is in the he is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He got inducted in 1997 as a member of Parliament Funkadelic. I mean, later on they kind of like hyphenated the brand and the bands within the brand, where you've got Parliament and Funkadelic. But if you look at their respective histories, they basically had parallel careers taking place at the same time. But yeah. Give Eddie Hazel a listen. Let me know what you think of his work in the comments. And if I left any of his any of his best work out, let me know what you think some of his, you know, sleeper great works are that I just omitted. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you love music like I do. I'm Wook. Thanks for tuning in.